Step 3. Wave equation in 3D. In the previous step we saw an example of a three-dimensional wave, so now is a good time to introduce the wave equation in three dimensions. So uh, the example that we considered in the form of plane waves was a very simple wave where the profile of the wave was not changing in time. It was just a plane propagating through three-dimensional space. Uh, in that sense it's a very simple uh, wave, but there are more uh, complex uh, waves for sure. So how do we describe such waves? And the answer is with a wave equation like we saw in the first lesson. So in the first lesson we had the following wave equation where uh, we had psi, our wave function, and we took the partial derivative, the second order partial derivative with respect to uh, space, and we said that it's equal to the second partial or uh, second order partial derivative with respect to time, rescaled by the factor of one over v squared, where v is the phase velocity of the wave. And we said that any solution that satisfied this equation was a valid um, uh, wave in one dimension. So now, what do we do uh, about three-dimensional waves? How does the wave equation look in three dimensions? So again, we're going to use the same approach and say that whenever we have some three-dimensional wave function that satisfies the wave equation, that's a valid wave. The question is, what is this other part? What is the wave equation in three dimensions? So, what do, we, what do we expect from the wave equation in three dimensions? Well, first of all, we expect that um, the spatial coordinates, x, y, and z, will enter in a symmetric uh, fashion. So rather than deriving the wave equation in three dimensions from scratch, like we did in the uh, one-dimensional case, we're just going to state it and then look at some of its properties and how to use it. So this is the wave equation in three dimensions. You see that it's very similar to the one-dimensional case, but now we, we are uh, considering three dimensions, so we need to include this following partial uh, derivatives of second order with respect to y and with respect to z. And this is uh, in Cartesian form. And in particular, the, this left-hand side is very useful. It pops up all the time in physics, engineering, and mathematics. And therefore, this operator here has its own name, and it's called the Laplacian operator. It's uh, denoted by this um, inverted delta symbol. It's called uh, nabla squared or del squared. And it's defined as the following. It's, uh, you have to take the sum of the partial derivatives of second order with respect to x, with respect to y, and with respect to z. So more concisely, we can write the three-dimensional wave equation in the, following, in the following form, and we're going to be using this one. So let's, uh, let's test this uh, wave function on a simple harmonic plane wave, just to make sure that we understand that it works. So here's our uh, wave equation in three dimensions, and we derived the form of the plane wave in the previous step, and it's the following here. So let's just substitute it in. On the um, uh, left-hand side, we've got the Laplacian operator operating on our wave function, uh, like that, and what we get is minus uh, modulus squared times the wave function itself. And on the right-hand side, we've got 1 over v squared times the second order partial derivative with respect to time. And we get the following. We have minus omega squared over v squared times the wave function psi. And immediately we can see that in fact, uh, the harmonic plane wave satisfied the wave equation in three dimensions because of uh, the relationship for the phase velocity that we derived in the previous step. The phase velocity v is equal to omega over k. Good, but what about more general plane waves? For We can see that the wave equation is satisfied for harmonic plane waves because of this nice property that harmonic waves have. That if you either take the sine of kx plus omega t, or you take uh, the exponential form of the sinusoidal plane waves, you always get the following, that if you differentiate it twice with respect to some one of the spatial coordinates, you get minus kx squared times uh, the, fun uh, the wave function back, and same with respect to time, you get minus omega squared. So does that mean that in order to satisfy the wave equation, uh, we must have the wave function to be of this form? 
Of course, no. That would be really, really um, uh, a restrictive uh, requirement. So let's see that the wave equation is satisfied for general plane waves. Now we're not going to assume a particular form uh, for the plane wave. We are just assuming that it is a plane wave. And to describe such a wave, we just say that it's some function f, and we're not specifying what the function is, but the argument is given in this following form, meaning it's a plane wave. So let's substitute it into our three-dimensional wave equation. The only thing that we are assuming is that our um, wave function f is at least twice differentiable. If it's not, then it doesn't automatically doesn't satisfy the wave equation. So what we can do is we can expand the dot product inside uh, the argument for the wave function f and write it as a, as a new variable u. So this entire thing we're, we're going to lump into a single variable u. So what we have to do is we have to uh, transform all of these, the Laplacian operator, meaning all of these second order partial derivatives with respect to x, y, z, and t, we have to uh, re-express it in terms of derivative with respect to our new variable u. So all the time we'll be using the chain rule. In particular, if you consider the first term of the Laplacian operator, um, the second order uh, partial derivative with respect to x, we can write it as follows. So now what we have to do is first we need to change the um, um, partial derivative with respect to x to be a partial derivative with respect to u uh, using the chain rule as follows here. du by dx, we know what it is. We can figure it out from the definition of u. That's just kx. And we do this again and again and again until we find the following expression that the second order partial derivative of our wave function psi uh, with respect to x is given as follows. It's kx squared times the second, partial, second order partial derivative of our wave function f with respect to u. And you can repeat this for the other terms of the Laplacian and also for the time derivative in the wave equation. And you can uh, convince yourself on your own that uh, indeed these are the correct partial derivatives. So we put everything back together and we obtain the following expression. Here we are multiplying the parentheses by the second order partial derivative of our wave function with respect to u. And inside the parentheses, we've got this expression. And by now, I'm sure you recognize that, uh, in fact, k squared is equal to omega squared over v squared, again, because of uh, the phase velocity being equal to uh, omega over k. So this shows that uh, plane waves don't need to be sinusoidal. They can be any general form uh, where the um, wave function is at least twice differentiable, and they satisfy the wave equation in three dimensions. Now, in the next step, we will consider another three-dimensional example.